what's in here. This is the brand new Leica SL3, and I'm currently not at home in Vietnam. I'm in Wetzlar, Germany on a rainy day, and I'm here in my hotel room, and I'm here for the product release of this camera right here. I won't be able to release this until now, but I'm here a few weeks before the release of this beautiful camera that I've had the pleasure to use for the last couple days. And I'm gonna do a deeper dive into this camera when I get back to Vietnam and share some sample photos that I took. And in that video, I'll talk more about whether I'll buy this camera or not and how I might use it if I'm going to buy it. But right now, this is sort of a first impressions, an unboxing. It's not really an unboxing because we weren't given a box. It's more of like a, an unbagging. So this is the Leica SL3. I don't have a price yet. If I get the price before I do this video, I'll put it up somewhere right here. Um, a bunch of changes, a lot of little changes that add up to a big overall change in this camera and this system. A lot of things that I think you're going to like. A couple things that maybe I don't like. I'll have to wait till the end to find out. So let's start with what I'm most interested in, which is the UI experience and the design of a camera. What? You don't care about megapixels and blah, blah, blah and autofocus? Yeah, but not as much. I enjoy how a camera functions, especially Leica. That's what I come to Leica for. So we have some major changes here in the design. This camera is now a lot lighter than the SL2. I've got a Leica SL2S here, my editorial camera, and it's smaller and it's lighter. Now for many of you out there, for most people, I think that is a positive thing. I understand why they did it. The Leica SL2S is rather chunky, and for some people, it's too big to grip. I'm 6'1", I'm, I'm a big guy, I don't think I have like giant hands, but like normal size hands, and I love the way this camera feels. However, this is lighter, it's smaller, and they haven't sacrificed a ton there in quality. It still feels substantial, just not maybe as robust. I would say like you can use the SL2S as like a weapon. I don't think I would use the SL3 as a weapon. She's a little more gentle. A couple other physical design changes. We now have a second dial here. If you remember, the SL2 only has one top dial here. Now we have two, one here and one here as well. You can use this as your ISO and it has more of an M feel to it. And I like it, I actually love it. It's smart and I dig it and it's just intuitive. We now have a touch on and off button right here. So it's not a physical button like the SL2 was. You know, you remember this right here physical on off button. Some people don't like it, some people do. I thought when I got this, I thought I wouldn't like this, but after a day, I'm used to it and now I really like it. You can put it in sleep mode. You can tilt out the screen to wake the camera up. There's a lot of use cases for it. There's a lot of benefits for it. I'll talk more about that in my deep dive video coming up very soon. Other design changes, we have something a lot of video people will be excited about. A lot of street photographers like to shoot looking down. We have the new articulating screen. So it articulates like this and down like that. It goes in very easily, it's simple to use. It doesn't flip all the way back so if you're interested in like filming yourself that's not going to be a thing but that's not really what this camera is meant to do and you could also buy an external monitor and use it that way as well but nice to have now for street photography nice to have for studio photography if you don't want to be bending down all the time something uh, again I never thought I would like but once I start using it I really like having it and I don't want to go back to not having it other design changes now you have the menu buttons here on the right hand side and on the SL2S you have it or SL2 you have it on the left hand side so they've switched that over to this side and a little big bonus now with a new firmware update something big what I like about Leica is they listen to people the head of marketing here I overheard a comment I'll paraphrase him but he was like the thing about Leica what I love is like we're not too big to listen and we're not too big to make changes. Meaning they get feedback from their users and they apply it and they make changes. And then talking with one of the designers here, talking about that you know thing that we all complained about with the joystick butt not being able to use to zoom in to check focus, focus magnification. Now you can do it on this camera and I'm told very soon, very soon, you heard it here first, that will be coming to a firmware update for the older Leica models as well, which is music to my ears because that is something that really bugged me that they changed that on the SL3. They admitted their fault, they made a change. I love that. They took responsibility and they fixed it. I admire that about Leica. It's, there is a, a term in German called Verschlimmbessern. <laughs> um, you looked that up somewhere. Um, I definitely won't remember that. <laughs> um, and may, it means that uh, you want to improve something, but you mess mm -hmm. it up. Okay. Um, and that's what happened. And we'll, we'll have it in the, one of the next firmware updates that it's back. Those are the physical design changes that pop out to me. Oh, you now have this little ridge here, uh, which you didn't have 
not a big deal. I don't know. So that's it for physical design changes. Now, like stuff that you guys probably care more about than I do. New sensor, M11 sensor, triple resolution technologies. So you can dial it in between which resolution you want to use. For me, as someone that shoots a bit of everything, when I use this camera for editorial assignments, I would probably shoot at 36 megapixels. When I use it for my commercial lifestyle work, I'd probably dial it up to 60, just so I like having that feature. And speaking of features that I like that this doesn't have, a negative, no internal storage. Instead of internal storage, they opted to go for a two card slot system. You've got an SD card slot. You've also got a CF Express Type B here. So you can use now CF Express cards, which is great to keep up with that new 8K resolution that this camera offers. So that's nice. Again, I asked the question. I've been kind of a pain in this trip. I hope they don't hate me, but I like to talk and they seem to really like to listen. So I really respect it about them. I asked, I asked point blank. I said, why doesn't this camera have internal storage? People are gonna complain about it. And I had a good answer. They said it really kind of came down to, should we have two card slots and no internal storage? Should we have one card slot and internal storage? And they decided to go with two because it just made more sense. A lot of people wanna use CF Express. Some people only wanted to use SD cards. They said the possibility of a future model having all three it's definitely there, but for now, this is what they come up with. I appreciate the honest answer, and I think it's not a huge deal for me. I like the idea of internal storage, but it's just a little added bonus, not something I necessarily need. Something everyone wants to talk about, something everyone cares about, is the new autofocus system. Yes, I've been using it for a couple days. It is substantially better, but I am not like a high-tech autofocus person. We shot in an auto museum, and it was low light. It worked well. It has animal recognition now, which is cool to me because I am a wildlife photojournalist and I do a lot of wildlife stories, so it can recognize animals. It's an upgrade, it's nice, it's significantly better than the SL2. The battery upgrade is a 2200 mAh battery, so it's an upgrade from the SL2, so nice work there. Another big jump in technology here is the new Leica Photos app. We were able to download a beta version and like, wow, is it fast. So if you like to transfer your photos wirelessly or even connected with the included USB cable to your computer, to your phone, it is like lightning fast now. They have made huge jumps in speed. Like watching the younger dude talk about the technology there, he was like super excited about it and a lot of us were excited about it. And when I used it, it worked and I'm excited about it. I transferred a couple, these are 60 megapixel files. I transferred some of these to my phone in the new Leica's app and it was just like, instant and so bravo to them for that i think a lot of people are going to enjoy that people like to share things really quickly on instagram now you youngsters out there or old people like me that are trying to act like youngsters it's nice so bravo to the team there that worked on that i would say like that's probably the biggest jump they made you can tether with capture one pro so people that are going to use this in the studio use it tethered and just want to upload pictures remotely to an ipad or to your phone it's gonna work fast and it's gonna work easy. Uh, ISO now goes up to 100,000. I don't think I'm gonna use it 100,000, but it's nice. I think it's pretty good in low light. I haven't done a deep test yet, but if you wanna see, you just check out any videos about the resolution of the M11, and you can see how well it performs in low light, but we can now go to 100,000 ISO compared to 50, so cool, I guess. But they also have this accessory combo kit you can buy, or you can buy the items separately. They had an elk leather strap, not into that as a vegetarian, but. Some people like that. They had a nice wrist grip. So if you're one of those people like me who wants a more robust feel like you had in the SL2 uh, or slightly more robust, you could buy the battery grip and the wrist grip and it's now like a really chunky camera. I don't want that. I'm somewhere in between. The dual charger I would definitely buy because I would take this on assignment and I would need to charge quickly. They are making jumps in video. They have made a bunch of changes. Again, I'm not a huge video guy, so I'm not going to go deep into those specs. So. Those are the things that pop out to me. Sorry this was a little bit long, but there is just a lot to talk about. There's a lot of little things. There's no like big wow thing, but there's a lot of little things that add up to a big wow for me. Will I buy this camera? The answer is you'll have to wait. Um, but how I would probably use this camera for me personally, I would use it as a hybrid camera for editorial photography, video as well, and I'd use it for commercial photography as well. It has a lot of potential. And that smaller size that it has, again, like I said, Small complaint for me, but I think even over time, even after a couple days, I'm already kind of like it. So maybe I'm just complaining for the sake of complaining. So that's my first impressions. I think by now I'll also have the full deeper dive. We're gonna show you guys pictures from this. I'll talk more about my personal use case as a professional photographer. And I'll tell you if I'm gonna make the switch in my commercial photography. I use Leica for my personal work, my editorial work, but for my commercial photography, I use Sony. So will I make the switch? Something I've been contemplating for a long time from Sony to Leica for my commercial photography. This makes that decision 
really difficult. I'll talk more about that in that episode. Maybe here, maybe not. We'll see if it's out yet. See if the embargo is lifted. It's been a fantastic trip to Wetzlar. Anyone out there, I encourage you. Anyone come here and visit. You can see the museum, see how the cameras are made. You can visit their classic store and spend all your money on used lenses. I bought a 100 macro lens, which I will use for B-roll, which I'll probably use for B-roll for this video as well. Give you some detailed shots of these beautiful cameras. So those are the major changes. I'm sure I left a bunch out. I will get to that in the other video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And for you guys out there that are interested in my online classes, I have all that at Ask Mott by Justin Mott, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, one-on-one -on -one learning. Check that out in the description box below. Thank you guys again for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to have a wonderful day.